so there are some challenges for the digital world. Uh, the main is related to the energy consumption. For example, uh, uh, the digital consumes uh, already today 10%, about 10% of the world electricity. So this, okay, can be uh, discussed about the numbers, but the, the, the tendency uh, is, is there, is that um, there are a few percents of uh, our actual cons consumption which is coming from digital, and this is projected to increase uh, in the forthcoming years with an extrapolation that could reach uh, if no uh, changes done in the uh, power consumption for the digital, but also in terms of usages, can reach about 100% to the 2040-2050 horizon. And uh, um, uh, there is a second aspect, which is the material criticality. So uh, we all know this uh, 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 periodical tables of materials, uh, more and more material are used in the uh, digital uh, today. And uh, some of those materials, we, if we are continuing the same race of using uh, those materials, they um, will be completely consumed uh, in a period of time that can uh, range from few years to uh, hundreds of years. Uh, uh, an, uh, an important point also is those materials can be located uh, also in some uh, geopolitical regions that can be uh, sensitive. And we know that uh, the geopolitical situation is rather complex uh, in our days. Uh, and is it important for Europe and, and France to ensure a technological uh, sovereignty um, uh, on, on the digital? Uh, so um, there is, while saying that is a need for disruptive technology that can go beyond the conventional semiconductor electronics in order to fulfill uh, all these challenges in terms of energy consumption, material criticality, and local sovereignty due to the excellence of research in spintronics in, in Europe. So spintronics uh, can play an important role to overcome uh, all these uh, challenges. I will not... Uh, explain what is spin electronics, so the workshop is um, on that. But of course, this is the way we are motivating uh, with respect to the microelectronic industry, with respect to the um, um, uh, national policies in terms of funding for research, uh, what uh, spintronics uh, can bring. Um, and uh, uh, there are uh, several positive aspects in terms of po uh, power consumption, using the spin currents can have a positive impact uh, on that, that we can manipulate um, uh, uh, with ultra-fast uh, dynamics. Uh, and we also have a, a very good uh, knowledge with respect to uh, some other communities in terms of materials. So uh, we know how to grow those materials, um, how to uh, model them uh, very precisely, but also um, uh, the, the, the scientific discoveries move toward uh, technological integration. And right now we have a kind of spintronic versatile device, uh, which is uh, so far the magnetic tunnel junction and which can already be being used and proposed for several uh, types of uh, uh, applications. So that uh, is uh, a bridge toward a uh, new uh, degree of freedom for a radically new uh, electronics that uh, spintronics can, can bring. So that moved um, uh, in a uh, rather limited period of time from um, discoveries um, in terms of uh, lab research, mainly in Europe. Uh, and uh, we all know the discovery of the giant magnetoresistance, resistance, the Nobel Prize uh, jointly awarded to uh, Peter Grünben in Germany, Albert Fert in, in France, that opened up the that field of spintronics, which uh, already gave some applications in terms of data storage, sensors, uh, magnetic memories, with all the recent developments of concepts with the tunnel magnetic resistance, the spin transfer physics, spin orbitronics, uh, more recently. But uh, there is much more to do by using, by combining the use of spin uh, with different uh, other effects, uh, um, like uh, the thermal gradient, uh, play with uh, geometries, 
um, uh, electrical spin generation, spin orbit effects, uh, electromagnetic uh, wave uh, application, or uh, uh, new materials. So we can say that spintronics is a blooming research field for a new generation of low energy, agile, and sustainable uh, spintronic uh, devices. So there is also a potential for innovation in spintronics, and France is playing a, a role uh, in that. So spintronics was recognized among uh, uh, the top uh, 10 um, uh, technologies uh, by the World Materials Forum, and there are some large-scale investments in spintronics by uh, microelectronics uh, industry worldwide. The French community is um, a community which is rather large and well organized, having also culture for innovation. There, there were some startups, uh, and uh, together with our colleagues from Spintronic Factory um, uh, MOU, um, we are trying to have a joint uh, European community view uh, within Spintronic uh, Factory, and not only to orient uh, future. Um, uh, calls uh, for the uh, uh, European or, or Horizon Europe uh, fundings, uh, but also try to bridge the gap uh, with uh, with the uh, with the industry. So uh, that being said, so we uh, uh, took the opportunity at the French uh, uh, um, level to uh, use all these uh, assets and to maximize the prospects for spintronics in a um, a national project, large uh, investment national project on uh, specific uh, topics, but also investment in uh, equipments, which is called uh, SPIN. So that, and that is just to make the transition with the uh, national policies, is in within the framework of what we call those uh, programs and equipments uh, prioritary for exploratory or upstream uh, research. And uh, there were um, different uh, uh, calls for that. There were Right now, there is a third call uh, for that. So we succeeded uh, in 2022 to have this project uh, ac accepted. And the exploratory project uh, target to build and to consolidate a, a French leadership in some scientific domains, uh, which are linked to a, a, transform, a transformation in terms of technology, economical, societal, but also from environment and hold point uh, uh, of view. Uh, and uh, these projects have to allow to have a national uh, policy scientific in upstream uh, research and also to complete or to link uh, that strategy with respect to the uh, industrial um, uh, policy at the, at the national level. So CA and CNRS, which are uh, national organism uh, of research where uh, uh, after the project was accepted uh, uh, where um, uh, uh, so, so they, they are uh, the, the project coordinators and with uh, Vincent Cross from CNRS and myself on CA side we are coordinating this uh, project uh, some universities are um, uh, all, all the communities um, uh, associated to that, uh, but there are uh, some specific places like uh, University Grenoble Alpes, Paris Saclay, and Université uh, de Lorraine, which are um, uh, associated to that. So, in terms of uh, uh, project uh, implementation, so uh, this project, which is an overall investment of 38 million uh, euros for uh, eight years. Uh, is uh, containing several uh, what we call uh, targeted projects or moonshot projects, uh, which are uh, covering the main aspects I was mentioning in terms of storage, computing, communication, and sensing. So there are five targeted projects. Uh, uh, those, topi those topics are aligned with identified scientific domains of the national uh, strategy, and also we align their temporality in terms of um, um, uh, deliverables with the acceleration uh, projects and the uh, national industrial strategy. So these five projects are covering aspects on uh, chiral textures, so using of uh, skirmions, use of um, antiferromagnetic materials for uh, spin terahertz, uh, but not only antiferromagnetic materials, um, terahertz spintronics more generally, 
uh, use of uh, uh, magnonics for several uh, applications, uh, RF uh, oscillators uh, for uh, Internet of Things, but also AI uh, applications, uh, and uh, also innovative uh, spin uh, sensors. So this is an example of uh, one of the targeted projects, the way uh, this is organized. Of course, uh, the objective of this presentation is to not uh, give all the details about uh, how this is organized, but uh, we took all the forces at the national level in order to build um, um, uh, very ambitious uh, projects uh, with uh, dedicated milestones uh, aligned with uh, uh, some proof of concepts that can be aligned with the uh, national uh, strategy. And uh, these are some key figures uh, and challenges and goals uh, in the uh, targeted project of uh, uh, Skirmians. There is in the project implementation, some uh, trans there are some transverse actions, uh, namely on materials, uh, advanced characterization and theory uh, with the objective to build a portfolio of research infrastructures hosting at the national levels of unique capabilities uh, with uh, first the objective to boost the research in innovation in each of the moonshot uh, projects of the five moon for moonshot projects, uh, but also to um, uh, really reinforce these uh, research infrastructures that can be used, and we'll see afterwards, for other open calls, uh, which are complementary to these targeted uh, projects. Uh, also, we have to mention that all actions related to the nanofabrication will also rely to an existing academic platform, uh, which is at the national level called uh, Renatec, French National uh, Nanofabrication uh, uh, Network. Uh, that's an example of a transfers project on uh, materials, um, and uh, several aspects are uh, treated inside with different uh, material deposition uh, techniques uh, with uh, transformative effect of the project, uh, which is to accurately control the materials and interfacial properties uh, that will require advanced multi-technique and multi-characterization approaches uh, with uh, diagnostic tools in situ growth monitoring, um, uh, some, uh, sometimes even in, uh, in real uh, time. So it's also some... Um, associated uh, 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 milestones uh, for that. In addition to the uh, targeted project, to the transverse um, projects, there will be, starting from next year, uh, we'll have two specific open calls in which uh, the objective is uh, both to uh, uh, bring new ideas and new applications uh, toward the moonshot projects to build uh, bridges between the emerging topics and also create opportunities uh, with other communities. There, there was um, a call for expression of interest, uh, which was open during uh, for the whole uh, uh, SPIN community um, uh, one year ago. Uh, with already 75 uh, projects or ideas uh, which were uh, proposed. And uh, all this will be uh, revisited um, uh, from uh, the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024 with uh, additional open calls and uh, chairs for uh, new researchers that will be opened. And this is uh, just a summary of uh, all the ideas uh, that emerged um, and uh, with objectives in resourcing the Moonshot project to build bridges between them to uh, address applications which are not already covered by the uh, targeted projects, but also to build uh, 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 bridges uh, with uh, other communities and to link uh, the transverse uh, uh, projects. Uh, in terms of coordination, uh, about the scientific part, of course, there is a part, a specific part as a big European project also uh, in terms of training with some specific spin schools. So there are some uh, existing schools that are um, 
uh, in which the French community is heavily uh, involved, uh, the European School of Magnetism in MRAM, a European School of Nanoscience and Nanotechnologies, which will be reinforced, but also other ideas of schools um, uh, can be emphasized during uh, uh, this uh, POPR SPIN uh, project. The link uh, with the uh, uh, international uh, and European community, mainly through the European Magnetism Association or the Spintronic Factory. Uh, in terms of communication, there are some existing ideas like the um, uh, Expo Magnetic, which was used uh, already to the Palais de la Découverte and is traveling uh, around France. Uh, but also there, there will be some specific actions uh, in sustainability. There is a uh, an initiative existing at the University of Grenoble Alp for uh, sustainable microelectronics for Internet of Things, um, specific um, uh, topics on gender and open uh, science uh, also. So uh, a final budget of uh, more than 38 million uh, euros that will be shared in between the different actions, the targeted projects, the transverse project, the open calls. Uh, so they will be about uh, 18 to 19 million uh, dedicated to this uh, open course that will be opened by uh, beginning of uh, next uh, next year. Uh, that's in terms of organization, but that's specific. Uh, the main uh, points are that after four years, we have to do a benchmark with the acceleration strategy. So all the targeted projects, we have to benchmark all the demonstrators uh, with uh, uh, some uh, industrial workshops, uh, namely, uh, and, um, of course, associated with some uh, specific uh, schools uh, with um, the main topics uh, of, of the PPR. By the way, uh, this year there is a specific school on magnonics, which is organized in Le Touquet in France, and SPIN is associated also uh, to, uh, to that. So, uh, just to summarize this part on the SPIN presentation, so the SPIN project uh, in the context of some uh, existing challenges in which uh, at the societal uh, level, uh, Spintronics can bring some uh, added value and the project uh, target to harness the creativity of the uh, world leading French Spintronic community and transform this research ex excellence into industrial development and uh, economic gain through several main objectives, trigger a new generation of devices strengthen the enabling platforms, bolster the positioning of the French community, expand the training, training for tomorrow's needs in Spintronics, and stimulate the industrial revival in digital aligned with the national and uh, uh, European strategies. So uh, SPIN is addressing, as I mentioned, the chiral spin textures, terahertz spintronics, magnonics, RF oscillators, magnetic sensors, but not only. There is a specific a uh, topic on uh, use of magnetic memories toward in-memory computing or bio-inspired uh, architectures, which is, uh, as is more mature technologically, addressed in another uh, PPR, um, uh, which is an acceleration PRPR, uh, electronic, microelectronics, we, and uh, was um, spin-off, uh, was organized, um, or kickoff was organized uh, last uh, week, in, in uh, Poitiers. And uh, the next part of the presentation, uh, which I, in which I will cover mainly uh, aspects on MRAM, is addressing some of the developments which will be done uh, inside this uh, POPR uh, electronic uh, mainly. Uh, just a final word concerning the PPR spin. So, uh, the scientific kickoff of the project will take place together with the colloquial, which is the uh, every 18 months uh, main um, uh, workshop of the uh, French community, which will take place this uh, year in set in between November 13 and uh, 16. Um, and uh, this is a French conference that has been held every 18 months since the early 19th. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, federating the French magnetism community uh, and so on. So this year, the colloquium, the colloquial will also be uh, used to uh, do the scientific kickoff of the PPR spin. And on Monday, uh, November 13, 
uh, will have a specific half day devoted to the scientific kickoff of uh, the SPIN uh, project. Okay, so uh, before moving maybe to the next part of my talk, which is more uh, on the uh, research I'm doing with colleagues at SpinTech mainly and also with some uh, collaborations. So I don't know if there are some specific questions on the first part dedicated to the PPR to um, uh, yeah, have uh, maybe some uh, discussion time before moving to this next part. Yes, ah, see there's already one question. You have to use both microphones. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. I was wondering, I couldn't see anything about the topological insulators. So this is completely out of the this PPR, the research on topological insulators, spin-based. Uh, so uh, already in the transverse materials uh, project, uh, there is um, already a specific task on topological uh, insulators. Uh, so in this uh, transverse project, so uh, there are people involved from different labs already doing uh, research in topological insulators, and that can um, uh, bring some advantages of the topological insulators on some of these uh, dedicated targeted projects. But uh, other ideas can emerge uh, through the open calls uh, and um, I'm not sure we mentioned it specifically uh, here, uh, but uh, clearly uh, topological insulators can uh, are, are of very much uh, interest so, uh, uh, for, I mean, for the community. And if there are some nice ideas, do not hesitate to contact or create a consortium that will address um uh, some uh, specific uh, projects uh, within the open calls so let me uh, i'm i'm not a solid state physicist i'm an optician okay mm -hmm. so i I'm, i work on on topological photonics uh, so we really explore like models uh, of interest in topology using photons but i would like to uh, to ask you what is your vision about the role of topological insulators electronic ones on the mm -hmm. advancement of uh, of electronic functionalities based on spin or, or 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 more in general so do you think this this uh, these topological insulators are going to play any important role in in the development of new technologies uh, based on yeah 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 definitely so there are already some uh, ongoing concepts using namely in the um, interconversion aspects a transformation of uh, uh, charge to spin and uh, uh, spin to charge uh, already important um, uh, role of the topological um, ins insulators and uh, for example just for spin tech we have already some ideas uh, of um, uh, memory concept which are based on topological insulators and there is uh, even a startup company uh, that will um, uh, will be created in the forthcoming months that is using um, a concept uh, using uh, topological insulators for improved uh, uh, electrical properties. Now, uh, there is a bridge that can be made maybe also with the photonics and some specific uh, added value for the photonics of topological insulators. But already for the spintronics itself, uh, there is clearly an added value. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe no other questions. Well, I just had one um, because um, you said uh, you, you talked about the open calls. Uh, can, can you go back on the on the slide? That there was a lot of information on the open call slide. So you, you yes. Mm -hmm. So can. There are a lot of subjects that are yeah. covered, but uh, will it be limited to those or maybe some? some In principle, not. So this is the um, summary of the uh, call for expression of interest that was open in between January and February. So that allowed yes. the definition of uh, some specific uh, keywords uh, for, uh, for those open calls. But of course, uh, this is not... Uh, um, uh, this can be open to uh, 
to, to other ideas. At the end, um, uh, in order to move uh, beyond uh, a classical ANR project, which is uh, funding um, yeah, maybe half a million uh, for a consortium, the projects within the PPR, we target them to, to, to be uh, at least twice bigger. So, uh, which okay. means that with uh, 18 to 19 million available for that, uh, we'll have less than 20 projects. So, at the end, we have okay. to uh, take care that um, uh, main keywords uh, are fulfilled. But that does not mean that with the uh, work that has been done one year ago, uh, other ideas cannot uh, emerge additionally. Okay. But yeah, well, maybe if there's a consortium, then maybe they ought to contact you first to see yeah, so, if the subject uh, is relevant before engaging yeah. in the... So uh, uh, in the forthcoming, so right now we are finalizing the contractualization with the state of the project and uh, immediately in the forthcoming months, we'll start working on the um, open call, on the open call uh, uh, project. So. Uh, we will. Uh, we are projecting to open it by uh, January next year. Uh, so uh, we will inform all the community about the timeline and how to organize in order to build a strong consortia for, for that. Okay, I think we can move on to the, the okay. second part. Yes, everybody. Was... Thank you very much. So um... no, I did. I did not check if there was. A... Questions on the online? No, okay. Please go. Okay, so uh, this second part uh, is uh, dedicated some on some of the recent uh, developments on MRAM concepts uh, for uh, specific properties, which are of nanosecond switching, ultimate scalability, improved thermal stability, and those are parameters that are needed in order to uh, bring uh, the memories for the embedded part. Uh, or for the in-memory uh, uh, computing, which is the final uh, target uh, for uh, this memory. So this work is done in Spintech. So Spintech is a research lab that celebrated last year 20 years and which is located in, in uh, Grenoble uh, in a, a region which is called the scientific polygon in between the more uh, upstream research uh, in which uh, you can see here uh, the synchrotron or the nuclear plant for research, some of um, the uh, research institutions like uh, uh, Nail Institute from CNRS or all the CA part, uh, Spintech being uh, located um, uh, close to the uh, this Minatec area, uh, including uh, the clean rooms for uh, from Leti, for example, 200 and 300 millimeter, the engineering school and, and so on. And inside Spintech, we are addressing the Spintronics uh, from upstream to uh, application. So we are covering um, uh, a full range of uh, um, aspects going from material development processing. So we have um, access and uh, we are managing together with another lab in, in, uh, in Grenoble LTM, uh, one of the uh, five uh, main centers of the Renatec. Uh, network, uh, which is called the PTA, uh, the Upstream uh, Technological Platform. Uh, advanced uh, characterization and in some projects we are going up to complex hybrid uh, CMOS magnetic uh, circuits. Uh, we have people uh, addressing uh, theory and simulation, but also uh, people uh, conceiving design tools, uh, anatol, analog and digital circuit design. And uh, for some project, we are going up to system performance uh, evaluation. So uh, we have access to two um, uh, platforms, uh, for uh, one for characterization with state-of-the-art uh, uh, electron microscopes and, as I mentioned, this uh, technological uh, platform, the, the PTA. So I was mentioning some of the challenges um, uh, for the digital world with the power consumption, and um, I want to um, uh, zoom a bit more in. So if we are looking to the power consumption of the digital uh, circuits uh, in the last years from the ITRS roadmap, the bigger part of the consumption is not coming uh, mainly from the uh, memory itself, but what we called the switching power or leakage power in the logic part. So uh, what is the logic part, which uh, uh, seems to be the major is issue? 
So we, we can look to um, um, uh, memory hierarchy, um, which uh, is organized as a function of the speed of the memory. So the um, uh, slowest memories are on the bottom, the fastest are on the top. And uh, in terms of uh, density, so the denser memories are on the bottom, uh, the, um, uh, the ones which are not so dense, which are on the top. So uh, if we are um, uh, structuring all the existing memories uh, on this memory hierarchy, we are going from the uh, storage on the cloud, the hard disk drive storage, the local storage, the main memory DRAM, uh, and we, you have some properties in terms of uh, density, uh, but also in terms of uh, read and write uh, access. And if you are going uh, toward the processor, which is very fast but not dense, uh, we can uh, have some potential added value in terms of non-volatility because uh, in terms of color code, all the solutions which are so far uh, existing close to the processor are volatile solutions, no, not like the magnetic uh, memory. So other emerging uh, memories like the phase change or uh, OXRAM or ferroelectric RAM, uh, which are non-volatile. So there is a need in this logic path, which is close to the heart of the processor to bring non-volatility, which means we have to embark a memory that uh, can be from process point of view integrated, but which is fast enough uh, in order to uh, communicate efficiently with the processor itself, which means that uh, in terms of um, writing uh, speed, we have to reach uh, the, the gigahertz uh, regime. Uh, there is also another point that we have to mention in that communication in between the processor and the memory itself, uh, solving the energy challenge at the end is uh, how to um, reduce the cost of uh, moving data. Uh, a lot of um, power consumption is mainly coming from the accessing the data itself and not uh, necessarily from the operation in order to uh, compute or to do the uh, data handling directly uh, in the in the memory. And we have orders of magnitude, uh, larger con power consumption only to access uh, data. In a conventional computing, so we have a slow bandwidth between logic and memory, and the logic uh, being much faster than data transfer, and the high power consumption is coming mainly from the data transfer. Partly, this part is addressed with the memory hierarchy, which we discussed uh, uh, just in the slide before, by providing new solution of memory, uh, which are faster and integrated, but this is not sufficiently. Uh, the, the bigger part of uh, power reduction, power consumption reduction, is uh, going uh, uh, beyond the bottleneck uh, of what is called one, one human uh, bottleneck, uh, in which we are processing uh, differently um, the information in the memory array and in the processor. And the idea is to do directly the computing uh, in the memory uh, array. So perform logic operation inside the memory uh, uh, with the parallel local data processing and low energy programmable things. So, but for that, uh, in order to do that in memory computing, we have to have uh, some different bricks uh, for the future of computing, uh, uh, which is reaching some bottlenecks so far, which is the more slow in terms of scalability, the memory wall that we don't have so far solutions which are fast enough uh, and integrated with uh, with the uh, with the computing, and also the heat wall, which is the fact that the power consumption is also associated with the heat which is created inside the circuits uh, themselves. So the future of computing uh, uh, is a sum of three different things. I mentioned already a better memory storage position with respect to the memory hierarchy toward the top of that in terms of speed and not so dense. Uh, usage of bio-inspired computing, which we know is um, less power uh, consumption, um, uh, is also interesting and performing directly the in-memory uh, uh, computing. So for that, Spintronics can have some uh, assets. 
we know that already in that memory hierarchy for more than 15 years, the R&D in magnetism has been largely stimulated by the development of magnetic recording uh, technology. Even now, uh, a lot of uh, the storage, uh, which uh, is done in the cloud, is using uh, hard disk drives, so magnetic uh, technology. And there was a large evolution over the last uh, uh, years uh, related to all the developments that uh, done in in this in this field. Uh, now the progress in aerial density is slowing down due to some physical limits and lack of cost-effective solutions. Uh, pattern media being uh, too expensive, and uh, uh, namely for uh, local storage for users, there is a progressive replacement by flash hard drives or solid-state uh, uh, memories. Uh, the MRAMs are supposed to be the second uh, industrial type of application for spintronics, uh, and um, MRAMs, of course, is uh, the use in a, a, mat a matrix organization um, of um, memory cells, which are mainly magnetic tunnel junctions, and uh, that uh, have to be uh, written or uh, uh, read. Um, in an efficient manner. What is important to mention in terms of uh, um, scientific research with respect to application is that from the discovery of uh, the tunnel magnetic resistance up to the implementation of this into the first commercial product, the Togol MRAM for Everspin, it took uh, a bit more than 10 years. And from the theoretical prediction of the spin transfer talk, uh, to its practical implementation, the proof of concept, until the use of the STT uh, MRAM, it took about uh, 20 years. But right now, uh, big uh, IDMs or uh, foundries are uh, already having um, uh, programs involving uh, uh, magnetic materials. There were several flavors of this in uh, magnetic memories in terms of how to um, uh, write or read efficiently the memories. So we moved progressively from field-driven MRAM to uh, spin transfer torque, to spin orbit torque, or uh, to voltage uh, control. And uh, there were, uh, at the research level, other ideas which were proposed in use or racetrack memories or skirmions, or eventually combine the optical, uh, all optical writing to uh, write the information uh, in, in those memories. So uh, now with respect to the positioning on the memory hierarchy, we saw that the magnetism brought some advantages in local and cloud storage. Now the question is, uh, is uh, there a need for spintronics for cache replacement, which is a position uh, closer to the processor or uh, even going um, um, above, uh, uh, closer to the processor. So MRAM has some assets, which are, of course, the non-volatility, the fact that is CMOS and backend offline compatible. They are fast in the nanosecond time scale uh, or uh, below uh, for some uh, SOT demonstrations, uh, potentially scalable, and uh, a big advantage with respect to other uh, emerging uh, solutions like the PCRAM or OXRAM uh, is the endurance, which uh, namely for um, recognition uh, tasks uh, in artificial intelligence application can be a, a real asset. And uh, in some of uh, demonstrations so far, we demonstrated, for example, that uh, for similar properties, uh, MRAM can have with respect to the SRAM, which is the memory uh, uh, fast enough, uh, highly endurant for this cache uh, application is the main memory. So uh, we can have a gain in size by about uh, 60% by using uh, uh, MRAM uh, architectures. So uh, MRAM could uh, allow to increase the cache size, can also reduce the DRAM uh, dependency with a gain of speed, uh, power, and efficiency, and potentially with uh, some simplified uh, system uh, architectures. 
Now, in order to go uh, uh, faster, so I mentioned some numbers in terms of speed uh, needed for cache registers and processor, uh, on top of this non-volatility uh, uh, and energy, energy efficient, there is a need for uh, ultra-fast uh, switching. So there were several solutions proposed um, for MRAM concepts, like, for example, the uh, spe special flavors of STT, which are the precessional, so using a perpendicular uh, or orthogonal polarizer use of the EasyCon of the anisotropy in order to uh, create a small angle to initiate the, the reversal. There were some demonstrations in the SOT MRAM showing that this can be done in the, in the nanosecond range. Or more recently, even if at the lab level, there were some demonstration with all optical switching. So I will show also some of the recent results in implementing uh, all optical switching, which of course, cannot be uh, very dense due to the use of the uh, laser or uh, photonic chip itself, uh, but uh, can, be, uh, can be very uh, fast. So let me go um, on, on this, um, uh, a few details about uh, MRAM concept for non sub-nanosecond uh, switching. Uh, so the STT MRAM, which is uh, using uh, spin polarized current in order to switch the magnetization, uh, has some drawbacks in terms of uh, uh, right threshold current when we want to uh, go uh, in the uh, uh, in the nanosecond uh, range, and um, uh, that uh, increase in the threshold current uh, has some uh, endurance um, drawbacks at high, at, uh, high speed. Uh, uh, since we are approaching the uh, breakdown uh, voltage. So one of the solution proposed uh, was to use, instead of this STT RAM, a three-terminal device. Uh, so the writing uh, using the spin orbit torque in which the writing is not anymore performed by passing the current through the ultra-thin tunnel barrier, uh, but instead using a conducting line and um, use spin uh, orbit effects in order to, uh, to write that. So for efficient spin orbit torque uh, MRAMs, there is a need of materials uh, performing um, charge to spin conversion. Uh, so large uh, spin orbit uh, coupling that are creating spin current uh, perpendicular to, to charge current. And by doing that, we are decoupling the read uh, and write with potential um, unlimited endurance, uh, negligible read disturb, uh, and uh, limited uh, incubation uh, time. So SOT can be a solution for uh, what I mentioned, the uh, uh, SRAM replacement with switching down to 200 picoseconds, which were um, uh, already uh, demonstrated. So far, there are still a uh, need for in-plane field for deterministic switching, even if uh, there are some solutions that were proposed recently in the literature to get rid of that dependence of uh, an in-plane field in order to do um, uh, deterministic switching. And there were some uh, uh, recent developments in more manufacturable uh, 300 millimeter uh, process lines in which uh, SOT magnetic tunnel junction with perpendicular uh, magnetic uh, anisotropy and magnetic uh, hard mass that is creating an in-plane field uh, in order to get rid uh, uh, of this uh, dependence on the in-plane applied field. Uh, so uh, demonstrated, for example, by uh, IMEC, there were some solutions in which a hybrid uh, spin orbit talk STT with perpendicular uh, magnetic technology was used, and uh, Tohoku also <laughs> proposed the first integration of uh, SOT uh, MRAM uh, uh, with uh, with CMOS. So in the industry, uh, progressively move toward the SOT with an uh, increasing number of uh, actors and startups, but is still on a, uh, at a, an R&D phase uh, with a need to improve uh, still the right uh, efficiency uh, uh, and uh, density. Uh, another uh, uh, concept that can be proposed for uh, that part uh, of the memory hierarchy, which is um, uh, closer to the processor, is to combine 
uh, photonic and spintronic chips. So there was um, a European project in, in which uh, Spintech was involved together with colleagues from uh, Nijmegen, uh, IMEC, uh, Orus, and in which we demonstrated that in magnetic tunnel junctions, which were developed in order to have uh, a storage layer which is optically switchable, but integrated within a magnetic tunnel junction. So we uh, demonstrated uh, a sub a nanosecond uh, switching uh, times. So this all optical switching uh, mechanism uh, can be uh, either depending on the helicity of the laser or uh, independent. Uh, so far, the results in the literatures uh, are, are saying that the helicity independent uh, all optical switching uh, is single pulse. So this is good for technological implementation, but uh, only uh, very few materials are available for that. Um, it would be nice to combine uh, with helicity dependent, but so far, uh, only um, uh, switching with many pulses uh, have been uh, have been done. So our work together with colleagues from Nijmegen initially and after with uh, Nancy uh, demonstrated um, an electrical reading and optical switching with short laser pulses in materials that uh, integrate an optically uh, switchable uh, element, which is a terbium uh, cobalt uh, multilayer. And we developed a transparent conductive electrode, an ITO, in order to be able to bring the laser at the level of the uh, tunnel junction. So uh, I saw that I don't have uh, too much time remaining. Maybe I'm going a bit faster on here. So we developed uh, uh, magnetic multilayers. Uh, you still have time. Cobalt. Yeah, I still have eight minutes, but yeah, just to have also some questions no uh, also. So uh, development of uh, magnetic uh, multilayers uh, of course, uh, addressing uh, depending on the thickness uh, of the cobalt and terbium uh, within this multilayer, adjusting the compensation uh, temperature. So um, uh, the way we are proceeding uh, in terms of material deposition, we are doing with, those, with these two uh, layers within the multilayer, two orthogonal wedges, so a gradient of thickness that are orthogonal. So on a single sample, uh, we can have uh, 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 a large number of combination of thicknesses. So uh, we can um, improve a lot the cycle of learning and uh, identifying regions which have the adapted properties in terms of uh, uh, switching. So we can say that we can adjust uh, properly the magnetic properties uh, uh, with the layer thickness. Uh, that uh, uh, we identify the strong per perpendicular magnetic, magnetic anisotropy close to the compensation uh, region. And that perpendicular anisotropy was preserved um, um, once the multilayer is integrated within the magnetic tunnel junction. And we have been able to demonstrate that switching uh, in integrated magnetic tunnel junctions, either with femtosecond or picosecond laser pulses, uh, which are, of course, more adapted for uh, integration with uh, electronics, uh, ad adjusting so far electronics are femtosecond is uh, maybe more difficult. So, for example, we uh, we have been able by adjusting the fluence neither for switching. So this is uh, initially done for uh, full sheet films uh, that uh, we can reverse the magnetization either with femtosecond or up to uh, picosecond uh, regime. And what is specific with this terbium um, um, uh, materials based multilayers is that uh, we have almost not de no uh, dependence uh, on the pulse directions, so which is uh, very interesting in defining specific uh, regions uh, uh, for, for switching. Uh, that the switching can be observed uh, up to 10 picoseconds, but even more, we demonstrated uh, in between femto to up to 20 picosecond. Uh, pico and from a um, uh, scientific point of view, what is also very interesting that uh, by adjusting uh, the, the fluence, we can move from no switching to switching, but also to a switching with uh, multiple rings, which involves some precessional mechanism. So uh, right now, um, uh, we have a paper which is uh, under review, 
um, at um, uh, Nature Communication for that. And um, uh, but I don't have time to all enter in all uh, all these details uh, today. But it's a very uh, interesting physics. Uh, I'm more covering the technological aspect today. So uh, this is the way we are moving from these uh, uh, multi layers integrated with the M uh, magnetic tunnel junction and the hard mask, which is transparent. We are uh, developing um, uh, this process, so we arrive uh, at the end to this. Um, uh, magnetic tunnel junction uh, with the specific uh, gradient of thickness I was mentioning we can uh, uh, over a 100 millimeter wafer have different properties over the wafer uh, with some uh, distributions but we succeeded for example on junctions uh, which are uh, down to uh, 80 nanometer diameter to have tunnel magnetic resistance up to 75 percent uh, and in which we succeeded to show um, um, uh, field-free single-shot toggle switching uh, with uh, laser pulses of uh, 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 50 femtoseconds, uh, and uh, that in a reliable and reproducible uh, way. On top of that, we um, uh, realized a combined demonstrated integrating a spintronic chip with our magnetic tunnel junction. So we can see here eight junctions in line, which are designed and processed in our clean room uh, together with, um, so these are some sketch of the uh, demonstrator we did, but we coupled this demonstrator with the eight junctions in line with a photonic chip, which was designed by uh, iMac. And we have been able to switch uh, the magnetic tunnel junctions by the photonic uh, chip uh, produced by uh, IMEC. One uh, point uh, which is of interest because we did uh, this um, hybrid uh, integration by taking in a hybrid way one uh, spintronic chip and one photonic chip. That is that the precise alignment of the two chips uh, was done by using the uh, uh, thermal dependence of resistance, which are which is uh, shine. By the uh, by, the light laser itself, so we have been able to align uh, very precisely uh, that. Uh, I don't think, uh, yeah, I have the time to go on to the high density uh, AMRAM concepts. Uh, I can you you can use uh, those part uh, or you can yeah, see that, that part in 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 the in the slide. So I will not have the time to describe this. Uh, just to say that. Um, uh, in terms of roadmap for future MRAM applications, so there are different flavors. So I was uh, discussing today the uh, spin orbitalk or the all optical switching, which can address uh, several type of applications in terms of uh, speed, uh, endurance, or also for all the emerging of the quantum field, there is really a need for the read of the quantum bits by um, uh, low temperature uh, MRAM solution. So, um, uh, we are also working in proposing uh, uh, cryo MRAM solutions uh, uh, for that. One point, one point which is very important is uh, we have to go beyond the technology. So we are proposing the physical devices with improved properties, but this is nothing if we do not integrate that with specific architectures uh, and the Power consumption reduce, reduction is mainly coming uh, from the uh, combined work in between uh, technology uh, and architecture. And uh, uh, new architectures, one of them being uh, uh, bio-inspired, of course, uh, can bring uh, those advantages. And uh, Spintronics can bring an advantage uh, on that. And I was mentioning that specific project on MRAM and computing. So at the national level, we uh, we are pro proposing these concepts, which are the spin orbit talk. Uh, we mentioned this uh, use of um, topological insulators. So there are some concepts in which materials among uh, which uh, topological insulators are of interest can propose ultra low uh, energy, the optical or neuromorphic uh, inspired. So there is also a consortia within the uh, French national strategy on microelectronics that is proposing this uh, uh, spintronic solution. So beyond computing, spintronics can bring uh, other uh, functionality. So um, uh, recently we we had a project in which 
we integrated three different functionalities in a system on chip uh, 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 device, which is integrating uh, a memory functionality in a microcontroller like uh, function, uh, an RF oscillator, which is having a wake up receiver functionality, but also uh, a magnetic sensor. So the same uh, magnetic tunnel junction adjusting uh, locally um, its properties can address this uh, functionality. And uh, we have been able, for example, to propose uh, a system on chip, which is integrating a sensing part, a wireless part with this wake up receiver, and also a hybrid CMOS MTG, Spintronic Low Power Microcontroller, which uh, can have some uh, applications in Internet of Things. And here are some examples uh, which uh, are of other study right now in agriculture, uh, for example, or for um, uh, smartwatches uh, together with uh, uh, electronic microelectronics, which is the microelectronic part of Swatch. Uh, okay, I'm uh, uh, ending my presentation saying that uh, apart the study which is done in the lab is very important as a community to position itself with respect to the industry and we think that is very important the work that is uh, done together at the european and french level uh, to to bring more and more uh, solutions of what we um, work on the uh, on the magnetism and spintronics uh, in in our community so that work is uh, also uh, very important. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Sorry for uh, going a bit above the timing. And of, co of course, I would like to uh, thank all the colleagues uh, from SpinTech and collaborators that participated to, to this work. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lucien. I hope you can hear the clapping. Um, any questions in the audience on this survey? interesting and broad uh, overview of the MRAM technologies. Please don't be shy. No. Hi, this is Alberto again, the, the one the speaker before. Uh, I have uh, two questions about the all optical switching. Mm -hmm. The first is I missed the physical principle of the switching. So I, I probably you mentioned it, but I just uh, I just miss it. So when you shine light on the on the junction, why, why there's the, the, the switching? What's, what's the physical principle behind? Mm -hmm. And second uh, question uh, is about the, um, the power consumption. So you say that the optical switching is very fast and it's also low power, but I don't know how you counted this power. Do you count just the power of the light pulse that uh, arrives into the, into, the, into the junction, into the, the, the place where you want, to, you want to switch? Or you count also the consumption of the of the laser itself so you need to produce uh, to produce the light you need to to um, to put current into the laser and then uh, yeah. so so then there, there are losses there like mm -hmm. a lot of losses actually so yeah, yeah. or maybe not so that, that's what that, those are the two the two questions i wanted to ask okay so these are very interesting questions so i i i went a bit uh, fast uh, on this uh, description of the mechanism itself so uh, the all optical switching area, which is a field that emerged uh, from uh, uh, 2010 in different uh, uh, labs, uh, mainly around um, Europe, but also in Berkeley, uh, is uh, that uh, by shining the laser with ultra fast uh, pulses, and uh, the, the initial discovery was uh, um, the demagnetization that is happening. Um, in a ferromagnetic uh, sample by shining these uh, uh, ferromagnetic pulses. So discovery done mainly in Strasbourg by Eric Beaurepaire uh, and Jean-Yves Bigot. So uh, that uh, demagnetization that takes place um, is uh, an important uh, um, initial part of the uh, switching mechanism itself. After that demagnetization or uh, the way how you um, uh, transfer the heat to uh, electrons or to the array depends on the material itself. For specific uh, ferrimagnetic materials, which have two subarrays, uh, like um, 4F and the 3D, uh, the different thermal dependence of the two subarrays uh, is playing also a very important role in the way in which you reconstruct the magnetization after that demagnetization. So the fact that you uh, build 
uh, an opposite state at every laser pulse that is uh, shined on the wafer depends on uh, how the 4F and 3D um, um, magnets, which in a fairy magnet are anti-parallel aligned, uh, are reconstructed after the de demagnetization. So one possible explanation is that during that um, a cooling down of the of the system, you have a parallel alignment due to the di different uh, thermal dependence on the two, which is uh, creating the switching itself. But even from the uh, theoretical, <laughs> maybe just so we, there's a, an interfer interference. Yeah, maybe just uh, cut the micro. So um, uh, th there is still uh, not uh, enough uh, science to be done on this to understand. Now, uh, the question in terms of power consumption. So the number uh, we are uh, putting here in terms of uh, fluence and is uh, coming from what the laser itself is delivering, but um, on uh, we know what's the spot size, which for the moment is much larger, for example, than the tunnel barrier uh, or tunnel cell uh, magnetic tunnel junction itself. So we are scaling down um, the power consumption at the level of the cell itself, which uh, of course um, is, is, is not the complete picture if we are not able at the end to um, scale down the, the laser itself. So there is a lot of uh, technological development uh, still to be done in order to first uh, give a realistic number of that and be really uh, compatible with, with ultra low power consumption uh, in terms of uh, losses, thermal environment, uh, and also dependence on the uh, uh, magnetic tunnel junction diameter itself. So uh, this is of interest. And yeah, for the moment, uh, we are not in the uh, picojoule uh, target, uh, which uh, is needed for that. But for the, moment, for the moment, there is a nice science already to be done, and we are the proof of concept. Uh, and uh, all these uh, technological aspects will be addressed in this uh, project I was mentioning in the electronic PPR, but uh, they are still remaining. And thanks for the questions. They are very uh, pertinent and interesting. Uh, there's an online question very, very quickly. Who? Ah, Martin. Yeah. So uh, what yeah, are the yeah. okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. My question is in the chat. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Martin, for this uh, interesting question. So indeed, uh, uh, the Spintronics uh, super. Yes. Can you repeat the question because we we did not. Ah, okay. So the question for Martin is: What are the challenges and opportunities of the super paramagnetic limit in terms of nanoscaling and bio-inspired computing? So. Uh, in terms of nanoscaling, so we know that reducing the volume of the magnetic cell itself uh, is a part of the story because we are reaching uh, the uh, super paramagnetic limit at small sizes. So one part I did not present it at the end due to the uh, time was how to propose uh, uh, solutions that are stable at sub uh, 10 nanometer. Uh, for which uh, the interfacial anisotropy of the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy is not uh, enough to still preserve uh, that uh, information, which is uh, mandatory for a memory-like function. Now, uh, the fact that at small sizes, uh, we, we are not stable anymore, but we can control the way we are uh, stable uh, by uh, a combination of injected current or of applied magnetic field, we can use advantageously that super paramagnetic behavior or that stochastic computing by uh, for the bio-inspired computing. So there are a lot of uh, ideas around using that stochasticity, which is much better defined than for other uh, emerging solutions like uh, uh, PCRAM or uh, OXRAM, uh, is how to use that uh, advantageously. So, um, in, in SpinTech, Philippe Talachian, and uh, together with our colleagues from, from Leti or uh, from CNRS Thales, there are really interesting architectures that can be built on using that stochastic uh, behavior. Uh, 